You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Hey guys, got an exciting show for you today. I've been driving the Toyota Super and I can't wait to tell you a little bit about it before we kick things off. Let me tell you about Dodge and with Dodge Power Dollars, it's uh, every horsepower of your new Dodge vehicle that you purchase, you get $10 off. So peeling out in a 2019 Dodge Charger RT scat pack and you just get $4,580 off the price. So uh, it's a great deal. Dodge Power Dollars, check it out. Hello, welcome to CarCast. I am Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, with Bill Goldberg. Hey, Bill, how you doing? I am just peachy, my friend, and you? Good. Things are uh, things are good. Had an interesting week driving uh, driving some cars. I'll tell you guys about in a little bit. Uh, new Toyota Supra. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. I know we're kind of uh, you're pressed for time. Always busy. You got things going on, but. Um, Man, I wanted to uh I wanted to to touch base with you and and uh and talk about uh some of the projects you got uh going on. I saw the post from Marcus Angel about the Lawman Mustang. I don't know if he's just kind of uh doing a final assembly or if he's just um uh doing sort of the test fit, but he posted something that looked like uh Looks like the lawman with the with the engine in it and a couple of seats in it. It's looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's getting there, man. It is getting there. Have you? I, you know, I hate I hate to do this, man, dude. They're they're calling me right now. Oh, they are. All right. Yeah, yeah. This is this is my thing, man. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I got to get off the phone. Yeah, yeah. I'm Go sorry, ahead. Dude. Go do it. We'll catch up with you. Uh, anyway, so uh, check out. Uh, uh, he's working on a big deal. It's busy we're than talking we thought, about. Yeah, 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 we're working on a big deal. They were supposed to call him a little bit later, and they're they're calling him early. But uh, he's got to go do that thing. Um, uh, we'll tell you about that deal later. Granted, that he signs that deal. I think that's it. He's been working on it for weeks and weeks, probably since since uh, more than that, probably since December. But uh, so Angel Restorations, our guy Marcus Angel, our buddy over there in, in Arizona, has been working on the Lawman Mustang, and uh, he posted the photo of it, and it looked like this car is really coming along. And it's such a badass engine too, uh, and it's interesting because. The the front of the car, when you see it, has just like uh, where a radiator would be. It has like a very small, uh, looks like an oil cooler with a big uh, a water tank in front of it with no radiator. So I don't I don't exactly know the the story behind it. I know it was meant to be sort of a drag race vehicle, so maybe it didn't need much, uh, or or there's some sort of uh, remote cooling going on. But uh, it's it's looking pretty good. We'll have to talk to Marcus a little bit about it and see what uh, what's going on with that thing. And uh, uh, you know, we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, you know, I've been uh, I think I told you guys I've been working on uh, working on the truck as well, working on the Lightning. I ran into this weird issue recently where. I went out the other day and the battery was just dead. Like the battery's completely dead. There's no power to the vehicle, not even enough to just hit the door locks, right? Which is very little draw. And, uh, you know, I mounted the batteries to the back. Uh, I put two batteries in the back. Only one of them's hooked up right now, but I, I mounted one to the back underneath the rear bumper area, move some weight off the front, move it to the back, hopefully increase a little bit of traction. You got to have the battery on there anyway. So might as well take 40 pounds off the front, move it to the back. And uh, it, it's it's a good, you know, Odyssey battery. It's, you know, pretty expensive. Uh, we mounted it up, uh, made a custom mount for it. And uh, everything was working fine. Drove it for a while, you know, on and off for a couple of months. Been working on it. And I've been doing some stuff on the interior. Been, uh, you know, we had the gauges. I took the gauges out and had them rebuilt. We told you guys a little bit about that and that the 
the the peace arm that controls some of the shifting that was all rebuilt. Then we had the gauges restored a little bit, had the needles painted orange again, and and you know replaced some of the lights and polished the lens and and that. And while I was in there, I, I, you'll notice like on these older trucks. There's not a lot of interior lighting like there are on modern cars. There's no, like, ambient lighting. There's no lights on the window switches. The, these old window switches don't even light up. There's no button to light up. So uh, they don't, uh, you know, you can't really see the window switches and the door locks at night. You can't see the door handles uh you know, uh, at night to open the door. So I've been doing a little bit of like just accent lighting, um, very low draw, tiny uh, LEDs that I could uh, uh, hide in places that just give it a little bit of a a glow to it. So when I went in <clears throat> and I noticed that uh, that the battery was completely dead or there was no power to the vehicle and I thought, oh, maybe maybe something I hooked up was putting a draw on the battery, like even when it's locked. I thought maybe there was something with the lighting or something that was putting a draw on the battery. I was like, but, you know, it's a good battery. It seemed to be charged. And these things are so tiny. It's just so little draw. And uh, and I had it wired to the ignition anyway, so there, they weren't staying on all the time. So they were going off, and, and I saw that. Anyway, so I grabbed a good charger that's uh, set up for AGM batteries and stuff, and uh, – uh, uh, and I put the charger on there, and you know, and it said it was it was pretty charged. It was like ninety percent. Uh, it was like ninety percent charged. Um, so I was like, man, I, uh, I couldn't really figure out what it was, and I was thinking. Maybe there was some disconnect with the wiring. You know, maybe something came loose on the battery or a ground came loose. But I I checked the wires. It seemed fine. I hooked up the battery charger and I charged it. And it, when I clip up the <clears> – <throat> when I clip on the battery charger, plug it into the wall, set it up for, you know, 12-volt AGM, the whole thing, and it's charging the battery – it can get power to the vehicle, and it did work. So now I'm thinking, oh, the wiring's fine because I'm literally putting the clamps on the battery wires on the terminals there, and it's working. So uh, I guess I got to grab a voltmeter and see if there's something wrong with the battery. But uh, just kind of a weird thing to wake up to one morning is just kind of go out there and it's just dead. And uh, uh, anyway, so I got to look into that. If anybody has any ideas on what's going on there, let me know. I know I because I have two batteries. I can swap the batteries. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt because they're kind of upside down and underneath the bed, um, and the, and they're kind of heavy. And you kind of have to like undo the bolts and lower it down like onto your chest or something, and then you know move it over to the other one. Or I could hook up the second battery with some temporary with some wires that I can make or something, and see if that see if that makes a difference. But kind of a weird thing. But uh, anyway, so a little bit of a wiring issue there. Uh, I guess a wiring issue. Maybe it's a battery issue. We'll figure that out. And uh, the gauges will go back in. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the Powerdyne supercharger is being rebuilt. Um, I sent them the Powerdyne and the Vortec to rebuild. If you remember, the Vortec was the one that seized up on uh, on the BMW M3. That was the really expensive date I went on. It cost me, I don't know, like four grand or something. I had to buy a second supercharger for that. So I took this one and uh, we found out that one of the bearings um, slid underneath, you know, came out, went underneath one of the one of the teeth of the gear. And most rebuild kits won't do that whole shaft with the gear on it going through the middle of it. So it will have to go back to Vortec. So if you do want to rebuild it, um, uh, which I, I will do, and uh, I'll get it all fresh and new, and uh, it'll go to uh, it'll go back to Vortec to do it. Now it's an older supercharger; it's a V2, and I believe they can do an upgrade. They can do an upgrade to like a V2 SI or maybe a T trim, uh, something like that. 
uh, which uh, which might make sense to do if they're going to supercharge it. Any if we're going to rebuild the supercharger anyway, we might as well do some upgrades on it. And then I don't know, I'll use it for another project, or if one of you guys want it, you know, maybe I'll sell it or something. It'll be basically uh, an inexpensive way to get a brand new supercharger. Um, and then from there, uh, we're going to figure out what the next steps are. Next steps are. I went to the uh, SEMA. There's a SEMA MPMC event, and the MPMC event is kind of like. It's like a mini SEMA show, but without all of the show portion. It's the meeting portion. So it's a it's a it's an event with about I don't know about forty or fifty of the performance manufacturers all jammed into one hotel. And every half hour, you you can jump from meeting to meeting, sort of like speed dating, and meet with all of the companies. And the whole point of of this conference is to to meet with the with the manufacturers as media, although we're we're running out of the 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 enthusiast books and muscle mustangs and hot rods and car crafts and stuff. There's a few left, but a lot of them, as you know, uh, uh, just became sort of online only publications. But uh, it's a it's a chance for the magazines to meet with the manufacturers and go, hey, we've got a few ideas for these projects over the course of the year. We're going to build this car or this truck or whatever. Can we work with you on this? Uh, what new parts do you have that you want to show off? And all the cool like tech articles and and projects, short-term and long-term projects the magazines build over the year. It's great promotion for the manufacturers. It's, it gets their parts installed, oftentimes dyno tested. And there's no real trade of money going on. It's not an advertising event. It's a, it's a trade event. And uh, it gives us uh, an opportunity for the magazines to go, hey, we're, you know, we're going we're gonna to dyno test for this, or we're going to dyno test for that, or we're going to you know, do the show Engine Masters that Freiburger does that, that I love. And uh, I had some deals in place for the, uh, for the truck, for the Lightning, but uh, you don't always get to meet these people. Um, you don't get to see them all the time face-to-face. I've known them for, for you know, 10, 12 years. Um, but, uh, you know, the guys from Holly and Comp Cams, they're all on the, uh, the other coast. So uh, it's time to – it's good to, to sit down with them and go, hey, what are we doing and what do you have new? And Holly's got new EFI. They did Ford Fest. You guys know the LS Fest that they've done for years and years. It's a huge event. They did Ford Fest this year, and it was already huge. The first year it was huge. And along with that, they debuted a bunch of really cool – uh, Ford products, um, a lot of uh, you know small block Ford uh, products. They have uh, new intake manifolds. They have a coil on plug conversion, um, and then the distributor just has no cap, and it's 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 a low boy distributor. So now you can do like a front facing uh, throttle body. You don't have to get you know the distributor's not in the way. Um, they have a direct fit uh, Fox Body Mustang EFI conversion. It even comes with a little chassis. You take out the driver's seat. It mounts to the to the bolts. You put the driver's seat back on, and you got a, a you know a Holly EFI in there. You got to change the engine harness. I asked about this because I just spent uh, weeks of uh, it seems like weeks, but uh, days uh, doing all custom wire loom and everything all over my engine harness, and uh, and then they're like, yeah, oh, you got to swap the engine harness. So I got to start all out. Started all over again if I switch to the Holly EFI, but I like what they're doing. And uh, anyway, so met with the guys about the, about that. Met with them about the truck, and uh, the one thing we started talking about is I met with a couple of the supercharger companies, and for the Mustang Cobra for the red car, it's a three thirty one. Uh, engine. Um, it has, if you guys remember, just refresh your memory, it meant to be sort of period correct modifications. It's uh, it's still an iron block. It's a two bolt block, and that's going to be a limiting factor, but it's all beefed up. Um, DSS Racing built it for me, built the short block for me. It has, uh, uh, it has thread in, uh, 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 what do you call it? <sighs> I'm drawing a blank here. It's, um, the uh, freeze plugs it has the thread and fleece freeze plugs, which is a little bit more uh, structure to them. And it's got a stud girdle. It's got a main cap girdle on it. And uh, it's got all the good stuff on it. So it'll handle good power for sure. Um, just not a four-bolt block power. So um, 
We have that engine in there. We took the original GT40 heads, <clears throat> fully ported them. Um, I went a little overkill on some of the, the valve train components. I've got stainless steel intake valves. I've got Inconel exhaust valves. Um, I've got Harlan Sharps, like mini shaft mount rockers on it, uh, which eliminates the guide plates. And so they don't turn. They don't spin. They don't. Uh, less friction, no guide plates. Um, it's 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 good. It's kind of badass. We've got a great uh, uh, comp cams blower cam in it. And we've got the Pro Charger, the D1SC, which uh, I like. It's self-contained. Um, you know, we're making the brackets and stuff for that. Um, you know, we could we can turn up the wick on this thing and go big horsepower. I just don't know if the engine's really going to handle that much. But um, I think we could get somewhere in the you know in the and you know the 600 mark and the five, the high fives. It's easy to do with this engine combination and the supercharger, um, but uh, you know, but you know, we're going to run it on 91 octane, kind of make kind of a, a street car for it. You know, if I was getting five fifty or so at the engine, uh, I think that would be that would be fine for me, and uh, uh, I think this thing would would scoot around really quickly. Um, I don't, I don't know what that comes out to be something like, uh, I don't know, four seventy five, four sixty, somewhere in that four fifty to 500 range at the tires would be, would be badass on that car. So, um, but with the Ford lightning, <clears throat> we're using a dart block. We're using a four bolt dart block and it's going to be all aluminum. We're going to cut some weight off that thing. So it's a it's it's obviously a big pricey block, and it is costing me some money for sure. But I'm using a, a an all aluminum Dart 427 small block Ford. It's their 351 based engine. It's punched out to 427. They are making the short block for me. I'll bring it back here and assemble the uh, you know build the rest of the engine uh, myself, like we did on the uh, on the Cobra. Um, our, our buddy, uh, David Jusco, uh, that was in a few weeks ago on the show, who's working on my M3 for me. I'll probably drag him back in here to, to build the engine with me. He did the, uh, Mustang Cobra engine with me and we dialed in, uh, you know, degreed the cam, did the whole thing. So, uh, we'll probably, uh, work on that one as well. Um, which, uh, which would be cool. So all aluminum and then, uh, darts, uh, 225 CC heads, the biggest Ford head they have will go on there. Um, we're going to do a custom ground uh, uh, blower cam from Comp Cams. I forgot the specs. I don't, I don't have it in front of me, but it's something like uh, I want to say two twenty something, two thirty five something lift, maybe two thirty five lift. And I'm sorry, a duration it lifts probably like a six oh four, six eleven. Somewhere uh, I know the intake and the exhaust lift are, are over six hundred. It is staggered. Uh, it's going to be a one fourteen lobe sep. Um, comp likes to to cut uh, you know four degrees of advance in it, so it's a one fourteen plus four. Uh, just based off memory here, and uh, I, I want to do a shaft mount rocker system on it. Um, um, I, I don't know. If we're going to go as much RPM where you'd really require the shaft mount system, but, but I like it. I like the stability. I like the durability of it. I like that there's, you know, we don't need the guide plates, guide plates and stuff. So that's going to be kind of badass. Um, but anyway, the point of this is I've been talking to some of the supercharger companies and I kind of want to do one of the bigger race superchargers. One of the ones you don't normally see, uh, on, uh, on this street, um, the the Lightning has two fuel tanks, uh, one kind of behind the driver lengthwise, and one in the back. It holds something like I don't know thirty four, thirty six, maybe thirty seven gallons total. It's like a fifteen something and a seventeen or eighteen gallon tank. So we have a few options here. I can fill up both tanks with just our shitty ninety one octane gas and just kind of run it on uh, on. Uh, on low boost or pull some of the timing or whatever, just get it running as good as it can on the 91 octane. Um, or I, uh, I can optionally use one of the tanks for E85 or, or high octane. All right. There's not a lot of E85 here in LA. Um, and, uh, but you know, of course, over here at, at Corolla's Garage, we have a racing shop and we get a lot of VP fuel, uh, delivered for the race car. So, 
uh, you know, I can I can order up some VP racing fuel or something like that and run one tank a uh, hundred or, or octane and one ninety one octane, and I can switch it on the dash. And then you know, with with Holly EFI and uh, and the fuel systems that I was talking to Aeromotive about, we can run dual pumps. Uh, each tank has its own pump. And each tank can have a dual pump system, and we could probably program it to do use one pump in the tank, and then up to a certain boost level, it kicks on the second pump, uh, you know, to uh, supply the engine that way. And then uh, the the second tank can do the same thing; it can mimic the first, or we can, you know, set it up for you know, different pressures with the 85 or however we want to do it. So we have a few options on it. Um, but I like the Procharger F1A and I like the Vortec V30. And uh, they're they're both uh, different step-up gear ratios and uh, different CFM and different efficiency levels. And, uh, and they're cool. They're kind of badass. I like them both. I don't know if any of you guys have used either one of those. If so, you let me know. Tell me your thoughts on Vortec versus Procharger. Um, I, I'm i using them both. I have a Procharger, which is on the Mustang Cobra, which uh, um, uh, I like it a lot. I haven't, uh, except, you know, we haven't run it, um, but uh, a lot of good things about it and its build quality. Everything on that is good. The... Uh, the the BMW M3, um, I we blew one supercharger, but that wasn't a Vortec kit. It was their supercharger, but it wasn't one of their kits. And um, if you guys remember back to that story, uh, the oiling system was insufficient. Um, I believe the oiling system should be on top of the supercharger. So when it kind of sprays mist that oil, it uh, gravity feeds down to the bottom. Well, these guys had the... Uh, the, the mister at the bottom of the supercharger trying to blow up onto the gears. And I don't think uh, it works quite as well. Uh, so I think it was an oiling issue that uh, that caused the bearings to heat up and, and, and break. So we fixed that on the BMW and we upgraded to the new Vortec Ti supercharger. It seems to be working fine. Um, but what are your thoughts? Vortec versus Procharger. I'd love to hear some of your stories about that. Um, you know, uh, let me know what you think. Of course, you guys can hit me up on social media. Um, but uh, but interesting stuff going on, and I, I definitely like those uh, both of those big race superchargers. Um, it would be interesting to see if I don't think we're going to get it. I don't think we're going to get big horsepower on ninety one octane. Um, we probably got to talk to. Uh, uh, our our tuning buddy Ray McClellan of Full Throttle Custom Customs. We should get him in here and talk to him a little bit about it. Can we get a thousand horsepower? Can we get a thousand engine horsepower, crank horsepower? Um, that would be uh, that would be fantastic. I know the engine can handle it. I don't think. Uh, uh, I think it's going to take some uh, some racing fuel or something to make that happen. But uh, I, I I don't I don't know. Um, I don't know how bad our our. Our 91 octane really is out here. I think it's shit, but uh, Ray is out here. He's tuned a million of these things, so we'll find out a little bit more about uh, uh, about what he thinks on it. So, um, anyway, we'll get into that. I, I want to tell you guys about a little about the Toyota Supra. I've been driving that for a few days. It's pretty interesting, and I know you guys are going to be kind of curious about it. But uh, before we do that, let me tell you a little bit about Dodge. Visit your local Dodge dealer where they bring you performance, technology, and great deals. There's never been a better time right now because Dodge is offering power dollars. With power dollars, you'll get $10 off for each horsepower of your new car. Every 2019 Dodge Charger, every Challenger, everything they have. That means you can pull away in a 2019 Dodge Charger RT Scat Pack with 485 horsepower and receive an almost $5,000 cash back allowance. So if you get more power, you get more off. It's that simple. So hurry into your local Dodge dealer today and take advantage of Dodge Power Dollars. Uh, All right. So Toyota Supra, uh, a car we've been looking forward to for uh, for quite some time. Um, I thought it was uh, interesting. I know. Let's get right into this. uh, You know, Toyota versus uh, BMW debate. Uh, 
Yes, it's very much a BMW. Um, I was actually surprised in how much it was a BMW. Uh, it, it, it's an interesting partnership between Toyota and BMW. Now, there's nothing wrong with the car. The car is fantastic, and and uh, you know I have no problem with it being a lot of BMW components when it comes to the performance of the car. What does that mean down the road? I mean, does it will the car potentially be valuable in twenty or thirty years from now at at auction because of the uh, Toyota Super name and it's a good performing car, or will it hurt the value that people aren't really buying into the fact that it's a Supra? Um, it's more of uh, more Z four BMW than anything else. I I. I've been driving the car, enjoying the car. I, I went back and tried to read a bunch of stuff on the car to figure out how much of it is Toyota versus BMW. And uh, honestly, I, other than the body styling and uh, and uh, probably the uh, the gauges digital feel a little Toyota to me and uh, maybe some of the exhaust tuning, I don't know how much of it is Toyota. I don't even know if the suspension tuning or the brakes or any of that stuff or the the steering feedback, if, if if that's just all straight up BMW or not, but uh, they sent me a yellow one, and uh, don't don't love the color. Some people love uh, the yellow car. Um, I don't like the yellow. I don't like any yellow car for the most part. They're okay. It's not bad. You go see a Ferrari three hundred and fifty five in yellow, and like, yeah, it's cool. It looks good. But then you see it in you know in red, or you see it in blue, and you are like, yeah, that's still better. So that's just kind of my thought on yellow, but um, it did draw a lot of attention. You know, uh, it's a it was a highly anticipated car. I don't know what it's doing as far as sales, <clears throat> but um, uh, everywhere I went, people were looking at the car, stopping and taking pictures, asking about it. Hey, is that the new Supra? And and yeah, like hey, take a look, open the door, do whatever you want. It looks awesome. Uh, you know, take some pictures of it. It's 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 a cool car. It's um. It's very much a proper sports car. Recently, we've been driving a lot of SUVs, and occasionally we jump into some crazy supercars and the, you know the McLarens and the Lamborghinis. And uh, yeah, you're not going to get into the super and go, "Oh, this thing is just like a you know Uricon," uh, you know. But it, it's it's not. But uh, for where it sort of fits up in the in 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 the lineup of sports cars, it's a great proper sports car. Um, it's quick. Uh, tests have ranged for anywhere from 3.8 to 4.2 seconds, zero to 60. It seems to run low 12s, uh, uh, you know, pretty much all day long. It's got launch control. Um, I, I'm sure the conditions and the, the state of the tires and how many journalists have beat on the car, uh, you know, and, and all and it being rear wheel drive, especially all are determining factors on the zero to 60. Um, but that's what I can tell you. I thought the car, uh, I thought it was good. I thought it was comfortable. Um, going from SUVs into the Super, like you, you hit your head the first one or two times getting into it because you're like, hey, man, uh, you're, you're getting into a sports car here. You need to get down low. You need to swing the door open pretty wide and climb into it. Um, I thought it was fine. It's a little snug. It looks a little small, but it's fine for me. Alistair Weaver from Edmonds that was here uh, last week, he's, I don't know, 6'5 or something, 6'4. He's a giant. Uh, he said he fits in the car. So um, I, I guess it's just a lot of putting the seat down and back as far as it goes. Uh, and uh, I guess a tall guy would fit. Uh, I don't know if Goldberg's going to fit. Maybe just shoulders are a little big for that car. I think he's going to feel a little claustrophobic um, being in it. But uh, but it seems to be okay. I had a couple little issues with the infotainment system, um, not in how it functioned, but how I viewed it. And uh, it just felt like it wasn't getting bright enough, like when you're wearing sunglasses especially. And I, I think I, – tell me if I'm wrong, but this is like an issue with BMWs, right? Some of their – if you're wearing, wearing polarized lenses, some of their, their things don't light up. Uh, you can't see with the polarized lenses. This had the – the touch screen, which you can see, but it seemed kind of dark. And at night, it's better uh, significantly. So I don't know. It's just one of these things where you're like, if you get the Supra or you get the Z4, I think you have to tint the windows to make it a little bit darker on the inside to see it. I, I 
futzed around with it a little bit to see if I can increase the brightness. I really couldn't find it in some of the display settings. Maybe I missed it. Uh, it's very possible. But I don't know. It's just one of those things and just sort of everyday driving. And I'm like, what? I can't see everything that's going on. So, um, I you know, it seems like a tint the window is 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 the the way to solve that problem. And, and it's going to look better with the tinted windows anyway. Um, the handling is fantastic. The grip seems great. The uh, the steering feedback is is good. The engine had a great power band. It, it always seemed to be uh, finding these gears. Um, the ZF transmission was, was solid. It's a great little sports car. And it, it sounds good. It's, that's the other thing. It sounds good. I don't know how much of that they're piping in uh into the cabin through the sound system or something. Um, but even when you do roll the windows down and, and in sport mode, especially uh, the car did sound good. Um, it has that weird like putter sound, you know, that when you, you know, when it shifts uh, and uh, does that, you know, um, it, it kind of a turbo sound, but it's really coming out of the exhaust more. Um, which was uh, which was kind of interesting. I um, I liked the car. I thought uh, I, I some people were complaining about visibility, but you kind of just rely on the mirrors, and and it seemed it seemed fine. I didn't have any issues with that. Uh, staggered uh, wheels, um, I think, uh, and tires. I think it's a two fifty five in the front, two seventy five in the back. Um, and it, it scooted along good. As I got into it, each day I enjoyed the car more and more. And uh, you know, again, I would have liked to have seen a different color. I posted some photos up on my uh, on my, my social media. It's up on Facebook and uh, uh, and Instagram. You can see the car that that I drove. Now this one was outfitted with a few options. Um, it had the carbon fiber mirror covers and a few things like that. And uh, I think the upgraded sound system. And it came in at fifty eight thousand bucks. Now at fifty eight thousand bucks, what else out there is would be a competitor? I know they were going after uh, Porsche Cayman, um, and it's easy to say you're going after Porsche Cayman because it's the size and it's a two door and it's a two seater, and the Porsche Cayman's more expensive. So for Toyota and BMW to say, "Hey, we're going after Cayman." And we think we can get it, and we're going to do it for a little bit less money. That's a win. But uh, you know, you tell me what else what else is out there that fits the bill. I don't think it's a good competitor to Corvette. Maybe C7 Corvette, um, but the new C8 Corvette, the Supra is fifty eight thousand. The new C8 Corvette is going to be sixty thousand. But that's a plain Jane stripped down Corvette. I think if you optioned it out with similar things. The big stereo and the comfy seats and things like that. I think you're going to be closer to, you know, high 70s, low 80s on the Corvette. So that to me isn't really apples to apples. Um, maybe Mustang Bullet, which is like 50, 52, something in that range. Uh, uh, Mustang GT350 is probably in the $60,000 range. So it's very close to 58. If you could find one without any markups, I don't know if dealers are still getting them. They've been out for a while. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it's it's kind of interesting. Do you want to spend 58000 on a Toyota Supra? That's uh, – it's a good car. It's a lot of BMW. I guess it depends on why why you're buying it. If you think you're buying it because – because you're seeing values of 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 Toyota Supras go up, uh, I I don't know if it, is it the best investment car. I, I couldn't tell you. I'm sure if you got one and you wrapped it in plastic and parked it in your garage, uh, you know, 15 years from now you can take it to Barrett Jackson and and roll it out like anything with that low miles and uh, and and you know get your money back. I don't know if you make money, but you're going to get your money back on it uh, potentially. Um, but Anyway, that being said, it was I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was fun to drive. I haven't driven the BMW Z4, so I don't know if there any is any real difference between the two. I don't know if it makes sense to get the Z4 over the over the Supra. I can tell you if you like attention, the Supra is the way to go. There's there's a lot of fans of the Supra that wanted to see something cool and this car performs well. 
Um, I don't know if it lives up to the super legacy, up to the brand name, but uh, but it was uh, it was fun to drive. And then <laughs> and then I switched it out for the most opposite thing you can possibly imagine. Uh, uh, just yesterday, uh, well, I, as I'm recording this, yesterday I swapped it out for a a Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. It's got the Fox shocks and and uh, all the good stuff on it, and just <laughs> it's it's cool. I'm not a huge uh, Jeep guy. I haven't driven really uh, many Jeeps that I can that I can remember, but you know. The super, you're crawling into that thing, stepping down low, and then the the Jeep, I'm I'm literally climbing in it to to get in it. The seats are very flat, and it's very utilitarian, and the dash is kind of flat, and the steering wheel is kind of flat, and there's some road noise, and you can hear it through the soft top. But uh, but it seems pretty cool for 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 what it's supposed to be. Obviously, very different than a Supra. This one has the Fox shocks on it, and. Uh, uh, some of the off-road bits, uh, which I'll, I'll dig into a little bit more. So I'll get into more of that later. I just started driving it, um, and uh, uh, it's going to be interesting. And then from there, we're going to swap it out for a uh, for a uh, Dodge Challenger Red Eye, which is interesting because of all the Dodge stuff uh, that, that Goldberg does. I've driven – his red eye a little bit, but haven't had a chance to really spend some time with the car. So we're going to be doing that as well. Um, uh, anyway, so a few other things just in the news. But before we uh, we hit that, tell you about Geico. Uh, let's talk about your home. Do you rent? Do you do you own your home? Do you rent your home? Well, either way, I'm sure it can be a lot of hard work. But you know what's easy? It's bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. And that's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home and whatever, just in life. So go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. If you guys are wondering about... If you guys are wondering a little bit more about the Tesla Cybertruck, you may be getting an opportunity soon to dig into this little thing because uh, the Cybertruck was spotted by someone uh, who posted, a, I think, an Instagram video, just somebody out on the freeway, saw a Cybertruck, and they saw Jay Leno driving it with Elon Musk riding shotgun, and this woman is hilarious. Uh, hey! yeah. yeah, she's shooting the video. Jalen on Elon cruising down Crenshaw in this damn car. <laughs> this is crazy. This shit look crazy as fuck. Look at this shit. Look how crazy this shit look. Sheesh. Wait, there's a, there's a second one. Click over to the second one because the end is uh, she's fantastic. Look y'all, we buy the little SpaceX car. The little SpaceX car. <laughs> Little Elon Musk car. That's what we're going to call it now. Little Elon Musk car. That shit's tight. It's so... <laughs> we need to have her call in once a week. <laughs> Give us a little car reviews of stuff she sees on the 405 freeway. Uh, anyway, they're driving it around. I guess they're maybe going to be filming some... Uh, Filming some episodes of Jay Leno's Garage. Hopefully, I'd like to see it on Jay Leno's Garage. <laughs> see what's going on. See what, uh, see what Jay. See, Jay is super nice. And if he's riding around with, with Elon Musk, it's going to be, it might be a little tough for Jay to say, you know, it, it, it's goofy looking or it's too big or whatever. He might just get in it and go, uh, it's, you know, you did a great job. It's not for me. Who knows? Um, but uh, anyway, kind of interesting. And then uh, the last bit uh, that I wanted to uh, put out there is I'm excited about the Ford Bronco and all these different variations. It's two doors or four door. It's a mini Bronco. It's a full size Bronco. Um, but the way I understand it, the Bronco is based somewhat on the Ford Ranger platform. And why this is interesting to me is 
I drove the Ranger. I like the Ranger. And although we don't have it in the U.S., there's a Ranger Raptor that's supposed to be pretty badass. I, I, I had a friend who drove one, um, I don't know, in Australia or something or, or, and, and had an opportunity to drive one. It's like this thing is awesome. It, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot like a Raptor. The suspension is this, the same, just scaled down a little bit. And I'm thinking if, if we don't get a Ranger Raptor, Maybe we do get a badass off-road version of the Ford Bronco. Maybe we can get a Bronco with Ranger Raptor suspension and the Fox shocks and and some of the tuning. Or maybe it's a little bit of a flared fender thing and get a little bit of a wide body and stuff on it. Um, that would be kind of cool to see. So I, we're starting to see spy photos I, if you call them that, but it's they're testing the vehicles on the streets. They get wrapped up in all the camouflage, but you can tell that it's a Bronco. You can tell that it's wide wheels and all that stuff. So uh, it'd be kind of interesting to see the different variations of the Bronco. We're getting much closer to it. So if you're excited about the Bronco, this could be kind of cool. And uh, oh, speaking of wide body, there is one thing that that I saw on the uh, on the Super that I forgot to mention. It's although it's a small car with a short wheelbase. Uh, the way I understand it, it is the widest sports car with that length wheelbase. So it is the shortest car. It's with the widest track or however you want to say it. It's the widest short car you can get out there. And that helps to contribute to its its handling ability. Um, uh, it's just an interesting stat that uh, I came across that uh, – uh, and I don't know how long that's going to last, but um, – but I thought that was kind of interesting. But anyway, that's that's kind of what's going on right now. Um, I apologize that Bill had to jump off the phone. He had a very important meeting that he's very excited about, and uh, maybe he'll come in with a with an announcement next week. But uh, I think that's it. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna wrap things up. Uh, let's see. Are we forgetting anything? Anybody? Raise your hand. Are we forgetting anything? What do you got, Chris? Anything? I might edit this out, um, but. Do we have something going on at the Peterson in March? <laughs> yes, we do have something going on at the Peterson in the March. I don't think tickets are available yet, but we're putting the final touches on it. Uh, last year, we did uh, a celebration of Adam Carolla show, 10 years and 10 years of CarCast. This year, it's going to be exclusively CarCast. CarCast Live, March 21st at the Peterson Museum. Uh, tickets will go on sale very soon, maybe even by the time you're listening to this show. We'll find out. Uh, but uh, there's going to be a huge car show. Bring out your cars. Show us your cars. We're going to be judging, super judgy. Um, I guess uh, maybe we'll do what we did last year. It'll be my pick, Adam's pick. Best of show, people's choice. We'll give out some trophies. We'll give out some awards. And then stick around for uh, a screening, um, probably the Shelby Doc. Uh, we haven't completely decided. And although a lot of you guys have seen the Shelby Doc, it's cool to see it kind of live in an audience in, the, in that kind of environment. If you've been watching it on Netflix, this is a cool thing to do. Um, you also get tickets to the Peterson Museum. Um, if you've been there already, there's new exhibits going on all the time. If you haven't been there, this place is badass. They did like a $90 million or $100 million renovation. And then we'll do a live podcast as well. So the tickets we can get you there pretty much all day. You can, you can kind of come and go as you want, but write it down. Mark your calendars. Come to L.A. March 21st, CarCast Live. Uh, I think it, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's the second time we're doing it. It's our second. We're, uh, we're going to make this an annual thing. And... Uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun. Last year was was a lot of fun. Um, I the one thing I really pushed on this year was was I want more people to come out. Last year it it needed to be somewhat exclusive. So this year it's far more affordable. And don't quote me on this, but I believe uh, bringing a car is going to be thirty bucks to show a car. Maybe it's a maybe it's a little less, and uh, and there's a couple of variations on tickets, on screenings, and staying for the podcast and stuff that you can do. But if you're just going to show up as a spectator for the car show portion, uh, it's basically going to be cheap, possibly zero, <laughs> uh, or maybe just like something nominal, five or ten bucks to keep the riffraff out. I don't know, um, but. Uh, uh, 
we we have an idea on that, and I think it's gonna be it's gonna be good. Let's see if I can find it in front of me. Let's see if I dig through my notes. I would say. Uh, ooh, spectators free car show. Twenty bucks, bring your car, and uh, and from there the tickets go up a little bit. And we also will do a private garage tour um, of Adam's garage prior to the event. If you want that exclusive ticket, it's two hundred and fifty bucks. This is why I'm going to let you in on a little inside track here. This is why I think it's special. It's very possible. I can't make a guarantee, but it's possible that the new building that we've been working on can be done, at least done enough, that people that buy that ticket, that $250 garage tour ticket, might be the first people to go see the new garage with uh, that we've been building out over uh, – uh, I don't know where it is, off the near Pasadena, <laughs> uh, somewhere in that area. So that could be kind of badass. Adam's been talking about building the, the, the mezzanine, this whole loft thing, and the permits, and all this stuff. Yeah, it's going to be good. So at least just save the date. Save the date. March 21st, come to LA. I plan on being there all day. Or edit all of this out. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think you're going to have to. All right, that's it. Let's uh, let's wrap things up. Uh, uh, thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. And uh, Goldberg, we'll catch up with you uh, next week. And hopefully you got some news for us. And until next time, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. CarCast Show.